And so a lot of us fall into this trap of giving so much of our energy away for free because we expect that long-term investment to sort of come back where we can get something out of that energetic investment. For a lot of us, it's relationships. We give all of this energy and we're broken apart and we still feel this pull. We still feel this anchor that holds us in space. I felt that a lot in my breakup with my girlfriend. We were apart for a year and a half and I just couldn't shake that feeling of still giving her energy. And you can do that. You can still feed someone energy long after not being a part of their story. And ultimately, that's what drains us. That's what makes us feel everything you're seeing over here, this depleted exhaustion when it comes to someone else. And what I found when I was going through that breakup was there's a secret weapon that you can actually use. It's like a key to unlocking your own energy again and bringing it back to yourself. Now, I really want this video to not be super esoteric, especially for new people on the channel. Thanks so much for being here. If you're interested in how to make spirituality practical in ways we can actually understand to use in your life, hit that little subscribe button, turn your notifications on, and you won't miss another upload like this. So like I said, staying away from the esoteric and investing your energy to someone else there is a way you can get out of this. And there's a way that it won't be super mystical. It's a way that you can understand and apply right now. And that is through your emotions. At the core of who you are, your emotions are the first level into getting in touch from your spiritual being into this natural world. Your emotions are something you can identify. And that goes beyond reason. That goes beyond logic. So this is where the power actually sits within you, is within using your emotions and using them correctly. Because when you're away from someone that you've invested energy into and you want to get that energy back from, just thinking about them delivers energy. Now, I was broken up with my girlfriend for a year and a half before we got back together. And it was at that year and a half mark what I had done was I reinstalled that feeling in myself of being in love. And that's when she came running back. And it was at that point that I knew she had felt that I had stopped investing in her energetically. And the way we invest in people energetically, the way we give off this energy that they get to experience is by thinking about them and feeling certain things. It's natural to do that. But how do we do it in a way that we can preserve our energy? And the biggest way is to not let your emotions become a reaction to the thoughts. Don't let your emotions react to the thoughts of them, what they might be doing, who they might be with. I'm assuming it's about a relationship, but it can be about anyone. Don't think too much on the situation. I had a very big like fallout with one of my best friends this year. I felt myself so angry with him. I was like, no, like, this is frustrating. And I never really dealt with it. And eventually I said what I had to say. And he was just like, cool, goodbye then. And so we, we both sort of felt this weird thing. And one of our mutual friends had passed away. By this time, I was no longer thinking and feeling because I understand how this dynamic works. So I just like let it go. It takes time and it's not instant. But when our mutual friend passed away, he then reached out again and said, I don't like where our friendship, I don't want it to end like this. If something happened to one of us, I wouldn't want our friendship to be what it is now. And so it was that energetic retraction where I pulled back my thoughts and emotions about it. It's not about ignoring it. And that's something that a lot of people fall into the trap of is they start ignoring how they feel. So we don't want to get into ignoring what we're feeling. We're absolutely entitled to feel what we're feeling. But how do we do this in a constructive way? So I'm going to help you understand a few things that makes this so much easier because the whole point is we don't want to be reactive. We don't want our emotions to be on defense because that just feeds energy into them. And a lot of like narcissistic people, what they'll do is they'll manipulate a whole bunch of people and they walk away and people will keep thinking about them, keep feeding them energy. And it's almost like dinner. It's almost like healthy meal. They get their full plate of food. They get their protein, their carbohydrates, their nutritional vegetables. They get all of that from people thinking and energetically giving that to them. So they always feel satisfied until one of them pulls away. And one source of nutrition that you need, let's say it's protein that you're giving to this person. If you go, you know what, I don't care anymore, and you become indifferent, they feel that cut off. And what that cut off does is it makes them go, oh no, and they start clinging back for it. Healthy people will not do that because they don't need your energy to feel good. So you won't experience this when it comes to them because they are sustaining their own energy. Both situations, you can sustain your own energy and you have to, you meant to do that. You meant to be the emotional satisfier of your own needs. 
So the way that we get out of it in these super helpful tips that I was telling you about, it's to understand certain dynamics in how things work. Everybody firstly is a reflection and that's point number one. Everyone is a reflection. And once we realize that they're a reflection of us, we can take accountability, and that's point two, for the energy that we are experiencing, for the emotions that we are putting ourselves through. Here's one way to help you understand that you can actually do that. So the chemical reaction in your brain of anger only lasts 90 seconds in your body and in your blood. 90 seconds is how long it takes from the chemical reaction to occur and to affect you and then to be completely gone and useless in your body. Now, the truth is we stay angry for way longer than 90 seconds. But the understanding is we keep perpetuating a thought that reactivates and re-injects more of that angry chemical into our body. If we let it go, that 90 seconds is what we'll experience anger for and then it's gone. So we want to take accountability. When we are feeling a certain way, we must say, I'm feeling this way, it's my thing to deal with. And that's point number two. So once you go, okay, I accept it, I'm gonna take accountability for how I feel, then rationalize with the situation. And that is to go, I can't choose how someone else behaves. I can't choose the pain that they're feeling or that I'm feeling because of certain actions. You can't choose any of those things. And this is just a way to help you go, well, I'm not gonna feel certain things if it's not my actions. And one big thing we love to do, especially if you're the, the person investing all your energy, is take emotional accountability or responsibility for someone else's behavior. And that part we can't do. And what I mean by that is, let's say someone cheats. If someone cheats on you and you feel all this hurt and you're burdened by it and you want to solve it and ask questions because you're hoping to understand why they did that, what you're doing is saying to yourself, I want to understand why I'm feeling pain. I want to understand why you would do that to me. I want to understand your thing. And what you're doing is onboarding the emotional consequence. You're dealing with their emotional shit that should be theirs to fix. And you've got to snap out of that quite quickly. You have to get into a point where you go, I'm not going to onboard your emotions. I'm not going to feel for you. Your actions were your actions. How do we do that? When someone does something, allow it to be. If they do something, you go, well, I guess you did it. If someone cheats, and I'm not saying it's easy, but if someone has to cheat, you go, that's your actions. So you made your bed, you line it, I'm gonna go and find peace with myself. And then you allow yourself however many seconds for the chemicals to run through and feel what you gotta feel. If it's sadness and depression from that sort of situation, you allow yourself to process that. And then you let it go. You don't keep thinking, because thinking is going to keep feeding them energy. So we don't want to keep thinking about it a million times over and keep imagining what potential outcome has happened, what they might be doing with who, how are they feeling? Do they even care anymore? We need to let those questions go and feel what we are feeling. We have to turn inwards. And when you do that, that's where you start shifting and putting the energy back into yourself. Because eventually and a lot sooner, you will stop feeling something when you think of them you won't think oh because as soon as you perpetuate those thoughts you're now creating emotion and that emotion is energy which just feeds them and they get their nutritional meal again so you want to stop doing that and go okay i'm going to feed myself so you're going to start looking at yourself how do i feel today what am i grateful for today those are the secret tips into getting your energy back because as soon as you reinvest into yourself you think about you and you bring your energy to a higher vibration into a better feeling and you start feeling better, then they start to feel that something's missing. And some people come back. Some people run back and they're like, oh, you know, I wanted to see how you've been. Depending on how the situation goes and the ego not being too much in the way, they'll come back. I used to be the person who ran back. When the stuff happened with my ex and I felt betrayed, I would be the one running back after the three months because I needed the energy. I needed to have my energy fed. I didn't know that I could do it myself. I've been in both of these situations. But when you perpetuate thoughts, you bring it on. Now I'm gonna show you a way to feel the good feelings you didn't even know that you could do at any point in time. The way that I got that feeling back from my ex and I pulled that energy back of, of not being in love with her when we were still broken up was I realized that I can feel in love because I can imagine what it feels like. I can put that into my energy now and say like, okay, well, I'm gonna feel this 
imaginative feeling right now, no matter what, it doesn't have to be with anyone because then no one can break that. No one can hurt that. That feeling of in love belongs to me. And I would just feel in love. And then when I would think of my ex and it would come into my head because I had this self-satisfied feeling of being in love, it wasn't hurtful anymore. And then I knew I stopped investing energy into her and she could feel that because two weeks, that's all it took. Two weeks from when I had started feeling in love with life again, just being, and I felt that in my own space because I could imagine it, bring it into my situation and go, I feel this now. Who's going to stop you doing that? But what I did was pull that, pull that in and it took two weeks and she was like, hey, could we go and catch up? Now, bear in mind, we had not spoken for a year and a half. It wasn't like we were still texting or still calling each other. There were maybe two or three messages. One was, can I please come fetch my things that I left over there? And that took like six months after the breakup to even do. And then it was happy birthday, happy birthday to each other. But there was no conversations. These were four messages with purpose and intention and we left it at that. Now, why is that even relevant? Because this was a year and a half of no contact. There was no keeping things up to date. This was literally a year and a half and I said, cool, I don't want to feel sad about this anymore. I don't want to miss her anymore. I want to feel good. So I'm feeling in love with the moment and it stopped letting me feed energy to her. Two weeks later, can we meet up? So it's just for me, it was proof of concept. It was saying this works. This is how you get your energy back. Because no matter what she did after that, I, I supplied the feeling that I ultimately expected to feel from her. And that is the biggest thing I can tell you in this. If anything that you take note of is that investing energy into someone else to feel a certain way is the wrong way to go about it. Feel those feelings first. You imagine them. So assign them to your current state of self. What's wrong with that? Like, do we have blocks to that because we think it's delusional? What is the what is wrong with the idea of saying, I imagined this feeling and I placed it in a place and time with certain things and I'm going to get rid of the certain things, people and places and I'm going to put it in today. I'm going to feel it today just because I can. There's nothing wrong with that. That is actually how you manifest things and take control of your world. And so that's the whole point behind it. Feel the feelings that you want to feel in the moment. Don't make them attached to people. And then you'll stop investing the energy into them that you're trying to get back and you will start to feel uplifted. And the best part about feeling this without someone giving it to you is that you can do it for yourself 24 seven. So not only do you take back your energy, but you can recreate more energy for you to live in. And that's the best part about all of it. Please let me know if you have any specific questions about this. I love chatting about it. So if you leave them in the comments, I will personally reply to all of those comments and I'll chat to you about how this works with your specific situation and help you understand it better. Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this content, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, turn your notifications on and you won't miss another upload. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Mad love and light.